Hello everyone. Our group will have a discussion on the localization and the standardization of free chart practice. My name is Wang Yufei. I will answer question one, explain the localization and the standardization debate and why it is important. Question two, what are the key drivers that influence standardization and the localization of free chart M? My partner Shen Chen Chen will answer question three, what are the major debates about the topic in the literature? My partner Lu Zhihang will answer question four. How has this issue been dealt with in practice? First, we introduce the concepts of localization and standardization of HR practices. The localization of HR practice means that the subsidiaries modify the HR practice of the headquarters according to the local environment to adapt it. The HR practice standardization is the implementation of HR practices consistent with the headquarters. Therefore, localization reflects difference, while standardization reflects unity. Then, we have to understand why it is important. The positive impact of the localization is re reflect in two aspects. First, localization makes the employees and management of subsidiaries mostly belong to the same country, so they can communicate better, thereby enhancing internal harmony. Second, after the implementation of localization, the company can reduce the number of expatriates and spend less culture, spend le less cost, which reflects much cheaper. Therefore, the localization of HR practices overcomes the problems caused by standardization, which is not based on low cost conditions, causing increased the possibility of expatriate failure and the conflicts between the headquarters HR practices with the local environment, thus encounter obstacles. The positive impact of HR practice standardization is also reflected in two aspects. First, because the subsidiary implements the same HR practice as the headquarters, it is easier for the headquarters to grasp the operating status of the subsidiary and convince it for the control and negotiation of the subsidiary. Second, the standardization of HR practice protects the company's interests to the greatest extent and reduces the harm of nationalism on the company's interests. The standardization overcomes the company's limited control of subsidiaries and potential damage to interests bought by localizations. This shows that the localization and the standardization of HR practice is very important for company. The second question is what are the key drivers that influencing standardization and localization of HRM. We found eight drivers from past books. In addition, we also found four drivers in other academic literature. Next, we will analyze how these key drivers affect the localization and the standardization of HR practices. Among the eight localization drivers, the culture environment and the institutional environment permit the localization of HR practice to a high extent. The culture environment shows that the company's HR practices may conflict with the local culture environment. The institutional environment shows that the company's HR practices may not conform to the legal system constraints of the host, of the host countries and are affected by the host country's effects. Therefore, the company needs to follow the host country's culture and the institutional environment. Look less HR practice to ensure that the subsidiary's business can be carried out in the host country. Firm size and material, mode of, op, mode of operation, and the subsidiary role also promote the localization of HR practice. But compared with the institutional and the cultural environment, not every company will be affected by these drivers. So these drivers have low extent. The three key drivers about standardization or have a high extent of promotion of the HR practice standardization. The first point is strategy and structure. The, imp the implementation of the strategy relies on the standardization of HR practice. From the company's perspective, the company hopes to promote HR standardization, ensure that the strategy can be better implemented. Corporate culture is an important factor of HRM practice standardization. 
company that pay attention to standardization hope to promote HR practice standardizations. The third point is size and material of the firm. More material and large companies have more standard system and management abilities, which can promote the standardizations of HR practices. In other academic literature, resource dependence and experience are the two key drivers that promote the localization of HR practices in order to make better use of the resource of the host country. The subsidiary company will need to localize its HR practice. At the same time, the host country also has rich negotiation experience, negotiating on the company's HR practice standardizations, thereby promoting the localization of HR practice. Formalized control and electric HRM are two key drivers that promote the standardization of HR practice. Formalized control means, the, means a standard control mechanism and the formal control level. High, high, higher, formal, higher formalized control will promote the standardization of HR practice. Currently, com companies have widely used IT technology in the HR field and serve to transfer organizational structure. Therefore, companies that have widely used IT technology will be more convinced to promote HR standardizations. Next, our partner Shen Chen will answer question three. Hello, everyone. I'm Chen Chen. Actually, multinational enterprises are a forum where stakeholders may disagree about whether the subsidiary company should adopt localized practices or emulate the parent company with standardization. Therefore, there are a lot of debates about whether multinational corporations choose standardization or localization. Below, I will talk about some of the arguments. The views tend to localization indicates that, first, the localization strategy of human resource management avoids the conflicts and reduces the losses caused by cultural differences. In the management of local employees, cultural differences will greatly dampen the enthusiasm of employees. However, localization strategy can promote communication with employees and greatly improve the efficiency of local negotiation. It is also helpful to fully understand the overall strategy of the company. Second, the implementation of localization is conducive to improving the harmony between managers and employees because they have the same language and culture. Employees are more willing to communicate with leaders. Differences in behavior and culture between superiors and subordinates may make it difficult for foreign managers to communicate with local employees. Third, the localization can reduce the human resources cost to a certain degree. Using local human resources often costs less than using the expats cost of multinational companies, which makes the localization of multinational companies targeting the local human resources. In addition, there are a large number of excellent human resources for enterprises to choose from in the free-flowing talent market. Fourth, localization reduces the flow of managers and improves their working efficiency. Hiring local staff fully reflects the trust in the local market and shows respect for the local people, which helps the enterprise to create conditions to attract more local people to join, and talent will make the cohesion of the enterprise enhanced. However, Multinational enterprises generally prefer standardization, insisting that their policies and practices are strictly enforced in order to protect their interests. Therefore, the views in favor of standardization think that, first, standardized means in a fair way of performance, evaluation, and selecting talents in the world. For example, for different employees in the same position, no matter in the subsidiary company or the parent company, employees can rely on their own efforts to get new position and salaries, which can be recognized by employees and improve their enthusiasm. 
Second, cost and transfer issues provide multinationals with potent incentives to standardize. The costs to the multinational will increase if they develop multiple practices for each market rather than one standardized solution. Transfer possibilities also require that performance appraisal practices in each location closely resemble the parent standardized tool. Third, to ensure standardization, expatriation helps motivate managers and foster an in international perspective and global thinking. Global expatriation provides a good opportunity to learn and incentive to management. Expats mastery of global operation workflow quality standards are more accurate than local workers. Multinational companies need enough managers with a global mindset to coordinate the operation and the development of the business. How about it is about the localization and the standardization of different views. In general, standardization more focuses on products and services designed to expand the international market process. Also, as a goal to build the enterprise in to internal operation, improve the overall performance of the multinational companies. However, Localization pays more attention on a particular product or service to adapt to a market to retain good results in a particular area. Next, Zhi Hang is going to introduce his content. Okay, hello everyone, I'm Zhi Hang. Now we will introduce two relevant international human resource management practice case from two assets standardization and localization. The first case is National Instrument. National Instrument is a multinational company that mainly produces automated test instruments, which has more than 7,000 scientific researchers in 95 countries around the world. In 2016, National Instrument released a learning platform for all global subsidiaries. This platform used a unified and optimized approach to attract reward and develop employees. The main mode of operation is that expatriates from the parent company guide the subsidiaries so as to help them to understand and implement this standardized practice. The ultimate desired outcome of the platform is to engage and retain employees who are able to maximize their contribution to the business while achieving their own personal career goals. The core component is global talent management strategy, which includes six core people management programs, goal setting and performance review, engagement conversation, talent review, succession planning, career development planning, and conversation. With the increasing scope of international business, national instrument needs to recruit and manage different employees with different education level, work styles and culture. In order to deal with these complex challenges, the core concept of international national instrument is using standardized and unified training and talent development. In addition to increase the culture of subsidiaries and employees, another important objective is realizing the transfer and transition of science and technology from the parent company to the subsidiary company. Using a unified talent development system, not only the company culture can be penetrated into each subsidiary, but also the consistency of employees' understanding of the company's core technology and operating math can be achieved. So the friction losses caused by personal transfer also can be reduced. In terms of localization, Unilever has provided us a good salary management practice case. Unilever is a British Dutch multinational consumer product company, which is one of the oldest multinational companies around the world. In 2010, Unilever designed a localized global reward system. This system 
that gets the control of, subs of the subsidiary's own reward management system to each subsidiary itself, instead of handing over the management of expenditure. This system can evaluate the relative value of each composition in different countries and provide appropriate compensation for each employee by comparing and analyzing the value level and the extra situation of different countries. The system mainly focuses on three steps, basic salary, other welfare compensation, and CF reward survey. In terms of salary, Unilever will investigate, investigate detailly the composition level, industrial wage level, legal salary requirement, inflation and exchange rate of each host country in order to give employees the best salary. In terms of welfare composition, Unilever also carefully consider the differences in labor costs related to social security and health benefits in different countries, such as insurance, so as to ensure that every employee can get enough welfare protection. In addition, Unilever also used CF Reward Survey to understand employees' certification with current salary conditions in different countries. In this case, Unilever is fully aware of the differences in economic level, law and regulation, and social custom between different countries. It also recognizes that the parent company alone cannot have a full understanding of the specific situation specific situation of the host country. So you need to assign the task of investigating and setting employees salary and composition to each subsidiary so that the subsidiary can set the most reasonable salary and composition for its employees based on a full understanding of the domestic situation. This not only reduces the pressure of the parent company on the overall operation, but also meets the different needs of the most employees, improves employees' recognition of the company, and finally, improves the company's social reputation. Okay, that's all of our presentation, and it's our reference list. You can find more information from it if you want. And thanks for listening.